Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about paint cans versus spray guns. Which one do you need? What are the differences? Why? Let's talk about it. Not surprisingly, if you were looking into painting a project, you may be wondering, can I get away with using spray cans or do I need a paint gun? There are some definite differences between these two, but you may be surprised, you know, how much or how little those differences are. It depends on what you're painting, what size it is, what volume, and what kind of paint you want to use. On a tangential note, the boss must be working on a big project in here because it, it looks like something straight out of a Godzilla movie. Uh, wow. So in this video, we're going to talk about a couple different paint gun options, a couple different types of spray cans, and what some of the costs are associated with some of this stuff, and of course, some of the differences. All right, let's start with the first thing that I'm sure is on everyone's mind if they're selecting between paint guns and paint cans. Cost. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is more expensive than this. Also, if you're running a paint gun, you're gonna need a couple of other things. You're gonna need a regulator, generally, and more importantly, a compressor. Something's gotta fire some air through this. There are paint guns that are designed for painting fences and that sort of thing that are electric and don't require an external compressor. Uh, I do get questions about them. I do not have one. I've used one for literally painting a fence before. Uh, <laughs> depending on what you're spraying, they're a good option. Uh, but generally speaking, the answer is no, really. Like if you're going to be doing custom painting, you're going to be able to get a better finish usually out of a spray can than you would out of something like that. Now, if you really know what you're doing and you can get the, uh, get the airflow and everything dialed in really nicely, you could absolutely be in a position to prove me wrong there. I'm sure there are people who can get a great finish out of those. And certainly the, the really good quality turbine guns are a different story entirely. But at that point, you're not really saving yourself much in the way of expense by switching to those as opposed to something like this. Uh, and of course, there are other reasons to have a compressor like pneumatic sanders and whatnot. So these are definitely more expensive. There are varying levels and varying qualities of guns. These are, for example, generally, I'd, I'd say mid-range. Mid uh, these are Warwick's, these two guys. This 878S is my favorite uh, mini gun that I can afford because I can't afford like a SATA jet or something like this. Or like that and this is a de Vilbus finish line FLG4 or FLG400. Uh, this is the most versatile gun that I've used. It comes with three different nozzle sizes. It can do all sorts of stuff. So if you're looking at paint guns these are fairly mid-range but if you know how to set up a paint gun properly you can get a decent finish out of something like a Harbor Freight gun. It just uh, it will require some more work on the back end to make sure everything's smooth because they won't spray as nicely. They won't atomize quite as well and a little more work for cleaning because they're just more difficult to clean. They're in more parts and they're, they're designed with less smooth surfaces and sort of that sort of thing on the inside. But yeah, you, you can get a gun for pretty cheap. Uh, getting a cheap, cheap, cheap compressor though, probably not a great idea. Now maybe the uptick in price from a can to a gun is worth it for you if you're going to get a substantial increase in quality. Everybody wants a quality paint job. That's something that we all need to, you know, to keep in mind when we're making this selection. So let's talk about quality. Really, if you're painting something that's relatively small in size, you can get a quality coat out of a spray can. If you're painting a car, you should not be using a spray can. I'm going to go right ahead and say it. There are people who will disagree with me. Uh, but no, you, you're painting something that's very large and very expensive and you're going to, and we'll talk about a couple of the actual spraying differences here in a minute, but you're, it's going to be worth your while to get a gun for something like that. But in terms of painting something smaller, for example, if you follow me, you probably are interested in painting guitars. Uh, you can get a good quality coat of that on that out of a, a paint can. And a lot of these more expensive, fancier paint cans have fan pattern nozzles, or they're available with those. Some of these cheaper ones, bit of a different story. These guys have only a conical cap, and, and so they spray a circle, which makes it a little harder to get an even coat. But the fact remains, it can be done. So that leaves us with a consideration of what's the quality of the paint. And here we get into the discussion of what kind of paint are you using. So again, 
let's go back to these. We have two lacquer based type products. So um, the Mohawk, which is a fantastic product. They have their classic instrument lacquer, for example, and here the vinyl sealer, which I use very frequently. The difference between this and this uh, is that this one's in a spray can. It's the same product. Similarly with the Oxford, which is uh, my favorite new supplier for vintage nitrocellulose lacquer formula and vintage colors. These guys, same thing. Difference is just that this one's in a spray can. Now keep in mind, and I've said this in many of my recent videos, these guys are only available in Canada right now, but they should be more broadly available soon. Um, there's a link in the description if you're looking for any of this. This one is in the Amazon link. These guys are in the Warwick link, Amazon link. Anyway, moving on. Um, if you're looking for an acrylic, an automotive style finish, something like this, I'm going to go ahead and say probably not quite as good as what you can get for your gun. So for lacquers, it doesn't matter so much, but when you start getting into acrylics, it makes more of a difference. And finally, when you're getting into something like a catalyzed clear coat, um, you should know what you're doing before you venture into this sort of thing. But these guys, you can mix based on temperature, their flash off times change. Uh, you really just can't quite do this out of a can. You can get close. If you've seen my video on how to do a professional looking coat of clear with spray cans, there is the Spray Max 2K and there are a couple other brands that are doing that now, I believe Eastwood and Custom Paint, uh, which is UK based. They're doing 2K clears. They're great products as far as I can tell. Certainly the Spray Maxes, I've used it before. Check out that video if you haven't seen it already. Uh, but you're afforded more ability to kind of change things according to your climate conditions, thin things out if you want them to flow more, all sorts of stuff when you use something that you can actually mix yourself. So depending on the type of paint that you're using, there can very well be a quality difference. It's also worth considering what color you want. I know that seems odd, but these cans are only available in certain colors. Same with these. And there are places, and I think Oxford may actually do this, but there are places where you can go to get a custom mix. But generally speaking, if you want to be able to mix your own paint, you can't really do that in a can. If you have the tools to mix your own paint and put it into an aerosol can, I can't imagine why you're watching this video. But if you have a spray gun for the extra cost of that, you can take something like this if you get a clear and or even something more to this effect. And you can mix in something like these black diamond powders also available in the Amazon link. These guys I'm very excited to play with, um, but you can mix these into a lacquer. You can mix them into a polyurethane and you can create your own colors that way. So there's a lot of added versatility here. Now, before we get into a couple of what I'll call the miscellaneous uh, considerations, let's talk safety. This is a brief one. <laughs> it's the same, okay? If you're using a 2K, that stuff is extremely toxic. It'll harden in your lungs. It, it will kill you. Uh, but it doesn't matter if you're spraying it out of your gun or a paint can or spray can, rather. It'll still kill you. So you need to be prepared. You need to have the proper... Uh, respirator and, and PPE equipment required for something like that. Similarly, these lacquers, this stuff, for example, is a vintage nitrocellulose uh, formula. So as soon as you spray it, if you're not wearing a mask, and I've said this before, it smells like instant cancer. So regardless of whether you're using this, this, or this, you need to mask up. You need to be prepared. You should be wearing gloves, most likely, uh, and just protect yourself accordingly. Some people seem to think that spray cans are not nearly as dangerous as working with a spray gun. Frankly, I disagree wholeheartedly. You know, sure, you're going to put out more material with these, which could cause more haze in the air and that sort of thing, and could increase the volume of particulate that you could take in. But these guys have an aerosol propellant in them. That can't be good for you. Okay, I believe I promised some miscellaneous considerations. As I said before, if you're painting a large surface, you know, a gun is gonna allow you to get a better coat on something like that. One, you can get a bigger fan pattern. 
proper overlap. It's gonna go on more evenly. You can put out more material at once, which is very important for some of those larger, ty larger types of projects. And it's also quite important for some of these paints that require decent flow out. So a gun is better, uh, but that doesn't mean it's always necessary. Again, you can do a great job with some of these nice cans, even with these, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can do well with that. Also, guns allow for more versatility for detail work. So some of these small guys, if you've got something with like a 1.0, one millimeter nozzle, that sort of thing, you can get into much tighter spaces. You can do much nicer fades because you can change the opacity of your paint by thinning it more or adding more clear binder to it. Uh, you can change the amount of paint that you're putting out, which is something you can't do with a spray can. So you can mist your paint on lighter actually through the gun instead of just trying to move super quickly. There are a lot of benefits here. Uh, if you saw my recent video on doing a burst finish with the nitrocellulose lacquers, well, I did the initial burst with the cans and then I had to go in with my gun and tighten it up. So I had to go in and, you know, spray. I, I wanted a, a thinner burst. I couldn't do it with a can. You just can't get the same level of control. Also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, You look way cooler holding one of these. And you can vary your nozzle sizes for various thicknesses and stuff like that. So there are definitely benefits to having a gun. I don't think anyone can argue that, uh, but there are also people who think that you can't do a good job with spray cans and, you know, depending on what you're painting, they're probably wrong. All right, guys, that's it for this one. If you have any questions about this, please drop them in the comment section below. And as always, guys, help each other out. You've been doing a lot of that lately, answering each other's questions and whatnot. And I really appreciate it. First of all, it helps me not have to answer so many questions, which I don't mind doing. Um, but also a lot of you just really know your stuff. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. It, it actually does help me out. And remember to subscribe so you can see all the paint jobs I've got coming out. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. And I will see you next time.